strike. Hello and welcome to a new series uh, where I learn baseball. I'm here with Jamie and we're going to start off. This is our uh, part one. Did you have anything you wanted to start off with, Jamie? Uh, let's start off with um, just the, the simple stuff of, uh, you know, pitching and hitting. I think, feel like okay. that's the basics of, of baseball. Um, we, we see the fielders make plays as well. But yeah. I think it starts with a guy on the mound and the guy at the plate. Yeah. So I guess what I know about pitching and hitting is actually, now that I think about it, not a lot. I think it's the really obvious parts are three strikes, four balls, or it's a walk. Correct. It's, well, respectively, you're right. out or it's a walk. Um, aside from that, I know there's different kinds of pitches you can do, like a you know a slider, changeup, fastball kind right. of stuff. And then, you know, honestly, I guess that's kind of it as yeah. far from, from uh, I guess from a casual from my my casual fan perspective. So a casual fan may think, okay, uh, why is the pitcher throwing the ball and it's not in the strike zone? Okay, they don't always want to. Okay? okay, because you want it to appear like it's going to be a strike and then leave the strike zone. Okay, okay? so right off the bat, not something I knew. Yeah, I'm okay. Always trying. Yeah. <laughs> He's not trying to always throw it in the strike zone. Okay. He wants it to appear it's going to be there and then tail short or tail outside. Right, okay. And so the hitter can't get it in his what we call the strike zone area uh, that can make good contact with sure. it, right? Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, sometimes it's outside, sometimes it's inside. All of that. Other times they are trying to throw it down the middle of the plate or trying to hit hit the corner, the outside edge. Okay, so it's over the plate. So there's so much deception. You're trying to fool. So a hitter is standing there thinking, okay, is the ball going to be in the in the strike zone or not? And the pitcher is saying, okay, I'm trying to get him to guess what I'm going to throw. Right. So okay. usually if you're throwing a fastball, you're trying to throw that over the plate. Okay, yeah. for a strike. Okay, in the strike zone. But if you're throwing a curveball, it could be either. You know, sometimes you're going to start it high and watch it drop into the strike zone, whereas they see it coming high and they're like, oh, that's a ball. I'm going to watch this one go by. Now all of a sudden it's a strike. Or another time it looks like, oh, it's in the strike zone. I'm going to swing at it. And all of a sudden it curves outside and goes right, where okay. he can't make contact with it. So that's the that's the basis right there. The beginning part of baseball is the deception and the guessing game, the mind game between a hitter and a pitcher to guess whether he's going to throw in the strike zone or not. All right. Well, that's absolutely not something that I think even from uh, just watching it, how much went into that. I, I kind of, I guess thinking back on it, that makes sense. But I kind of always thought it's always trying to get into the strike zone because the, I guess the trade-off is you try one of these things and the batter can choose not to swing okay. at it because he knows that's what's going on. So okay. I guess that's where it makes sense in my head. But um I don't, I don't ever put those two yeah. things together. And the key thing for a hitter is to do what they call separating balls and strikes. He's swinging at the ones that's in the strike zone and letting go of the ones and letting them go for balls, the ones that are not in the strike zone. And, you know, that's when they talk about being a patient hitter, a disciplined hitter. You're only swinging at the ones that are in the zone. Right. Okay. Um, is there any strategy to intentionally walking them but I, I know there's intentional walks. Yeah, yeah, there, but... and there is strategy with that. Let's say, um, um, let's say you've got a guy coming to the plate who's just a really good hitter. Okay, he's hitting home runs a bunch, or he's hitting he's hitting the ball hard every time he comes to the plate. Okay, and, and there's two outs in the inning. But the guy behind him is not a good hitter. Okay. Okay. And so you're saying, okay, this guy who's coming to the plate scares me. He can do damage. So if we intentionally walk him, whether that's with, you know, in the old days, you had to throw pitches, four pitches out of the strike zone. Now you can just raise four fingers and say, intentionally walk him. Okay. You can. He walks down to first base, go to the next guy. Okay. But uh, you would now, so you're basically saying, all right, let's get rid of that guy. Let's put him down there at first base and let's go after the next guy. Okay. Because we think he's easier to get out. Yeah, okay. Okay, so there's the strategy. Sometimes you may just say four, four fingers, and let him go. Or sometimes you say, all right, we're going to see if he'll chase a bad pitch here. 
Okay, so we'll throw two or three pitches that look like they're going to be strikes, and then they curve outside yeah. or or curve low or whatever. And if he doesn't chase at any of those, we're surely not going to give him anything in the middle to hit that's in his strike zone. Okay, so maybe if we can get him to chase, we'll try to get him that way. But otherwise, we're okay with him just walking down to first base because we think it's easier to get the next guy. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that makes sense. Um, well, thanks, Jimmy. All look cool. Steer right.